and I have a fun week planned for my students. And I'm ready to receive my students with my lab coat. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another start of a new week in my classroom. Today is Monday, October 22nd, 2018, and I have a fun week planned for my students. This week in our science pacing guides, the students have to go over the scientific method and the nature of science and all the process skills. So I have planned a fun lab every day of this week. This is a short week, it'll be four days because on Friday is a teacher planning day. The grading period officially ends this Thursday. So for today, I'm going to start setting up the desk. I already set up the outside of my classroom door, which I'll show you later. And right now I'm just going to probably put it on a time lapse video so that you can see me put all the desks together. I also have to get all the materials for the lab ready for today. And just for the occasion, I got myself a science lab coat, a white science lab coat and some fun goggles because we're going to be mad scientist so i can't wait to set up the classroom and get it all going so let me get that started and i'll check back with you later before i get all my desks squared away and put how i want them to be put i just wanted to give you a before look so this is how my desk currently look these are all the bags that i got for the mini transformation that i'm doing it's not a full-fledged classroom transformation but it is a little mini classroom transformation that i am putting together so the first thing that I'm going to do is put the desk together. I'm going to have four groups of five and the desk are going to be covered with these tablecloths that I got from Dollar Tree. So I have these plastic tablecloths here, I have green and purple and black. And yep, that's what I'm going to do right now and start putting the things where I want them to go. So here we go. really quickly because I need to let the students in. This is pretty much how the tables look. So you can see I have two green and two purple. The purple ones have a little black cauldron and a little skeleton hand. The green ones have this mesh of a spider that's in purple and a purple skull. And basically what's gonna go inside of these containers is their lab materials for today's lab. And every day the lab materials of course will change. All right, so I obviously I didn't have time to do my makeup this morning and the room is kind of warm. So I have been running around getting all these things done. So I'm like all sweaty already, but let me go ahead and put my lab coat on and my goggles so I can let the kids in. It's very exciting. So here you go. You're going to drop the gummy bear in five, four, three, two, one. Drop your gummy bear. Oh. <laughs> Stop watch for some reason, even though it's not going to work. You can barely see him. All right, so here I am with my little goggles that I got. How cool is that because I'm a mad scientist these are cool because they kind of change the type of lighting that it does here it is and I could actually still see so yeah these are my goggles and my lab coat and I forgot to mention I have this shirt that says 
never trust an atom. They make up everything. So yeah, all sciency today. So the students are now in art and they just finished dropping their gummy bears into all four solutions. I'm actually going to put the gummy bears in their solutions off to the side because we're gonna continue on the day with the rest of the learning for today. We're gonna to go ahead and dive into reading, into math, and then around 1 p.m. we're gonna get back to observing what is happening with the gummy bears because we are exploring which solution will grow the largest gummy bear. So we're looking to see which solution increases the gummy bear's mass and length. So yeah, I'm gonna put those off to the side. I'm actually also going to take off the tablecloths because the kids, I guess, because they need to fidget on something. Some of them have already like started poking holes through the tablecloths. I just need them to last until Thursday because every day this week I'm doing a special lab with them. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and work on that now. Actually, when they come back from art, I'm gonna give them some recess and then we go to lunch. All right, so let me get going with this and I'll catch up with you later. So I wanted to quickly show you how my door looked this morning as the students came in. So these posters I got from Amazon. Love these a lot. There's one more that's on the inside of the door, which I'll show you. And this door covering I got from Dollar Tree and it even came with that battery operated light. So yeah, that's what the students saw this morning as they came in. And on the inside of the door, here is the fourth poster, Caution Radioactive Fun. And these little spider stickers I got from Dollar Tree as well. So that is the door on the inside. And this is our classroom on the inside as well. I've already taken off the covers for those two tables and put their experiments up there. So I'm gonna do the same here because we do have to take a test today so that kids need to have clear tables. So yeah, that's basically the fun we've been having this morning with science and having the students go over the scientific process and the scientific method and all the steps that we do in that process. We are exploring, I don't know if I already mentioned it, but we are exploring which solution will grow the biggest gummy bear. So we're looking to see which one will create a gummy bear with the biggest mass and the biggest length by the time that we're done. I know that this experiment will take a long time for the students to actually see the results. So we're gonna look back after three hours, which is about 1 p.m. to see any progress that the gummy bears have made. But I'm going to plan to leave these overnight so the students can see the biggest changes by tomorrow morning. And they're recording all of this information on a lab sheet that I'll show you right now that I put together. This is the lab sheet that I actually created. So it looks like a science board, as you can see. So we put the problem as a question. We have an if-then hypothesis. We started by putting the materials. I told them to put a creative title for their project. We talked about the independent variables and the dependent variables and the constants. And they started creating their data for before. And eventually when we're done with all the data and we're done with the experiment, we'll go back and list the procedures. And I know that this is not enough space, so I will be having them actually list the procedures on a separate page. And then we'll look at the results, the conclusions, and the applications. On the back of the sheet, the students did some background knowledge and information. And we got to list our references where we got the information from. But the references, most of them, especially what are the ingredients in a gummy bear, that came from the ingredients on the gummy bear package. So we'll put that on there. But yes, we make sure we did background before we formulated our hypothesis. So now let me finish clearing off these tables. And then I have to get the test ready for them for after lunch, which is a math test for topic three. And yeah, that's basically what we've been doing this morning and I'm looking forward to all the amazing fun and experiments that I have planned for the rest of the week. And I get to share that with you as well. So I'll see you later. I just finished setting all of the gummy bear cups on top of these bookshelves with all of their lab sheets right in front of the group that they belong to so that the students can look back at these later on in today and record their observations. So they're gonna stay there hopefully maybe until tomorrow morning as well. So I wanna give a little premise of what's happening right now. The students are doing their gummy bear experiment and they wanted to find out, cause they're curious, mad scientists. They wanted to find out what would happen if we put baking soda in vinegar. We all know what would happen. So I am not taking pure vinegar and putting baking soda in it. As you can see, I have a cup in a bowl for safety. But in here, there is vinegar and there's equal portions water. So I do have a tablespoon of baking soda. 
And right now we're getting ready to see what's going to happen. So right now, I'm gonna take <laughs> this bowl, I'm raising it up so everybody can see it, and I'm going to pour in the baking soda right now. The chemical reaction lasted for a few seconds as you saw me put the baking soda in the cup. Does anybody want to see an encore of that? Yeah! Okay. I'm, I'm going to reset the experiment so you can see it one more time and they want to see it one more time. As you can see, about half of the solution that was in the cup went outside of the cup and now is swimming at the bottom of this bowl. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up both the cup and the bowl and there's still baking soda at the bottom of the cup, obviously and also outside of the cup in the bowl. So we're gonna reset this. We're gonna do it again. This time, let's put less water and more vinegar. Yay! So let's see what happens. Round two. So we had this little amount of water and now we're gonna pour in more vinegar than before. So that much vinegar. That's a lot of vinegar. More than the water, for sure. We're setting it in our bowl for safety because we know already what's gonna happen and we don't wanna get the classroom floor all wet or me all wet. I have my tablespoon in here and here we go. Goggles on. Okay, so here we go, ready? Round two. So it's the end of the day and it was a great day. The students had an amazing time, fun time as you saw today with the science experiments and the lab and our gummy bears are still going on there. Tomorrow will be a full day that we get to take them out with tongs and measure their mass as well as their length in centimeters and see how that changed from this morning before they put the gummy bears in the solutions to tomorrow. And tomorrow we're doing another lab. Tomorrow is a Skittles lab. So let me grab the materials. 
I went ahead and I prepared the materials for tomorrow. Tomorrow's lab doesn't require a lot of prep time like the one today did because we had all those four different solutions. Tomorrow, they're literally taking two cups. One will have room temperature water. The other one will have hot water and they're going to drop one Skittle in. So each group is going to get a bag of Skittles and they're going to repeat this three times. Each group will repeat the three trials. For this one, we didn't do the three trials because since we had four groups going, that's like having four trials going at the same time. Each group is gonna get two spoons, one to stir the Skittle in the room temperature water and one to stir the Skittle in the hot water. And a person in the team is going to have a timer and I got a set of six timers that came in this box. The batteries were not included, but I did have AAA batteries that I got from Dollar Tree. I got a pack of four AAA batteries for a dollar. So these digital timers are going to be used by each team because they're going to time how fast it takes the Skittle to dissolve. So here is the timer and it has an on and off switch, which is great. So obviously we're not gonna dissolve the whole entire Skittle. What we're dissolving is the color itself. So how long it's gonna take for the color to dissolve and then all you have left is the white Skittle because when the color is gone, it looks white. All right, so that's the lab that we have tomorrow and it goes over heat energy and also solutions and solutes and solvents and all that stuff and dissolving a solute into a solvent, etc. So. We're doing all of that and practicing the scientific method by gathering our background information, stating our problem before we gather our background information. And then once we gather our background information, writing our hypothesis using the if-then statement and making sure that we pay attention to our independent variables, our dependent variables, and our constants, or the things we control within the experiment. And of course, listing the procedures and the materials and making sure they use metric measurements and all those things and gathering their data, making observations, Today, the students stopped a couple of times during the day to observe the gummy bears. Let me show you how they look so far. So obviously, the baking soda doesn't fully dissolve in the water. The salt did, and notice how the gummy bears, some of the kids were making an observation saying the gummy bear almost looks smaller. So we talked about that and the possibility that water, whatever water is inside the gummy bear, is actually exiting the gummy bear. And then they noticed that the one in baking soda was pretty big and that the one in water looked pretty clear. So we also talked about that, and I asked them, where do you think the water is going? So they were finally able to state that the water is probably going inside the gummy bear, and that's why it's looking clear. And of course, that's exactly what I want them to notice because that is osmosis in process. And they're noticing that the gummy bear and vinegar is dissolving. So yeah, this is one team. This is the second team. As you can see, similar reactions are happening. And here is the third team and the last team over here. So this is all of their gummy bears and all of their lab sheets are there. So like I said, tomorrow we're gonna take them out using tongs and we're gonna measure the mass and the length using metric measurements, of course, and make observations and come up with our conclusions for that experiment. And then of course, we'll get started with this one, which shouldn't take too long. And then after they're done, they are going to get bags of Skittles, which I have right here in this container and today as you also saw they got gummy bears to eat after we completed our gummy bear lab and then we went ahead and took our topic three chapter three math assessment which i have to now grade and i started reading a very spooky book that i kind of show you the cover of and some of them because it was their suggestion they said oh you should put spooky music in the background so i found a youtube video with halloween spooky background music and they're like oh my god the book is even spookier with the music going on in the background and they can't wait for me to continue reading it it is a chapter book but i'm going to read it little by little every day up until halloween next week so that they can see what happens in the story because it's very interesting so far so that's pretty much what we did. And we did a little bit of social studies by looking at the current events from vocabulary. So we did see this week in rap, junior, and we were able to look at the current events that they featured from last week. So that's basically my day in a nutshell. And now I'm gonna have a grading party. I'm gonna give myself till 5 p.m. to grade as much as I can, input as many grades as I can in the grade book, and then I'm gonna call it a day and maybe have a fun movie night tonight. Hopefully I get to invite my mom and maybe we can go see Crazy Rich Asians. So yeah, that's my day and I'm gonna end it right here and I will check back with you tomorrow.
Good morning, everyone, and happy Tuesday. So today is day two of our Mad Scientist Week, and today the students are going to check on the progress of their gummy bears, which were left soaking overnight in all four solutions, and I kind of already took a little sneak peek, and although they thought that baking soda created the biggest gummy bear, they are in for a surprise when they fish out the gummy bear that is in water. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek before they come in so I can tell you exactly what I mean. So here are all the gummy bears that we left yesterday. So I'm gonna grab a spoon because I need to show you what these look like. So this is the one in baking soda. This is the one in salt that some of them had mentioned yesterday that it looked like it was shrinking. This is the one in vinegar, and this particular group used a light color gummy bear, so you can't really see it, so they're gonna have to fish it out, but you will get to see what it looks like. And this is the one left in water. You can kind of see a blur of it right there, but wait until I use the spoon to show you what I mean. So let me grab it right now. All right, so this is the one that is in baking soda, and this is how it looks, okay? And then this is the one that's in water. Check this out. Look how huge it is. Oh no, that one broke. <gasps> my bad, that was my mistake. I broke it. Oh no, now they're gonna be so sad. But it's so big, guys. At least we can kind of sort of put it back together. I'm gonna have to let them know that it was totally my fault. But I'm not gonna mess with them anymore, y'all. So this one is in water. You can't see it because it's all clear. So I will let them know that I did try to fish them out and that one broke but they are all super huge. And now I just feel terrible that I broke that poor gummy bear. Ugh. Anyway, but they'll see the other ones and we are going to measure them by length and we're also going to measure them by mass because I did bring a food scale so they can see how many grams they are. But yeah, that one in the water, it's humongous. It's just, you can't see it because the water went inside so it created the gummy bear to be more transparent. Bless me. Like I was saying, it created the gummy bear to be more transparent because the water is inside of it. So I can't wait for that. And I already have the materials ready for tomorrow. And I also have the materials ready for today's lab. And I also have a bowl in front of me full of fun size Skittle bag that the kids are gonna get after they're done with today's experiment. So this is the bowl right here. And I did put plastic eyeballs that I also got from Dollar Tree, because why not? So they're gonna get a fun size Skittles after today's Skittles experiment. The only thing I have to prepare for it now once we get started is to heat up some water so that all the teams can have water. And we're gonna repeat that three times. So I'm very excited to find out how the students enjoy today's activities. And yeah, I still feel pretty bad about breaking that gummy bear. My bad. All right, so let me also show you what my desk currently look like because I got to get them all set up for them to come inside. But my desk are a hot mess right now. And this is what it looks like when I stop to grade a whole bunch of papers. Even though I grade everything and I really shouldn't grade everything because then I have a million trillion grades. But that's what I do. But let me show you what I'm working with. So this table right here is all reading and language art stuff. That table over there is like math stuff and a packet that I need them to finish this morning. And over here is science and social studies. Obviously, we have done more science and social studies stuff. It's just this is what I have left to grade. So yeah, I have a very busy day today. Plus, I have Girls in the Run this afternoon. So after Girls in the Run, I'm going to be spending the rest of my time in my classroom trying to get caught up on all this grading and make sure that I input those grades because they are due by Friday morning. But for me, since I'm going to a PD on Friday, I need to get them done by Thursday night. So without further ado, let me gather all these papers up and set up the tables for the kids to come in and start working on that packet and then ultimately start working on the gummy bear experiment, finalizing it so that we can do the Skittles experiment. All right, so I'll check back with you sometime later on in the day. Oh, but before I do, I wanted to show you, I am wearing a new t-shirt today. It is a sign shirt. This one is from Lipstick and Littles and it says, science has me shook. 
I love it. I just got it. And it's interesting because I ordered it about over a week ago and it got to my house less than a week. Now, I will link her down below, but just know that from time to time, she does shut down her website until she has enough inventory. I think she's getting ready to open it up again. So if you go to her site and you see that the website is not open, just save the link to her site and check back from time to time so that you can find out when she's opening her site and has all the stock ready for new shirts. So check it out because she has some new designs coming out. So now I'm definitely going to stop for a moment so I can get these tables ready and I'll see you later. All right, so all the tables are now ready and the only supplies they have in their supply baskets are what they need today to finish their gummy bear lab. And then I'll replenish it with today's Skittles lab. And I'm ready to receive my students with my lab coat and my fun goggles. So here we go to say good morning to the kids and get our day started. See you later. Hi everyone. So right now is my lunch time and I just wanted to come on and give you a hashtag real teacher life moment. So as excited as I was this morning about doing this math scientist activity today, I have to say that different things happened this morning that have left me kind of feeling sad and disappointed in the actions that some of my students decided to partake in. So for one thing, I have on the desk, as you may have recalled, the tablecloths. Now I know they're gonna poke in them and everything, that's fine, but one group, deliberately like i don't know why they did it but tore part of the tablecloth off and the, another group was playing around with the different decorations i had on the table which is fine i mean i expect them to play around but not as much as they were doing it to the point that they were not following directions they were not listening to the procedures and information i was giving to them and in the middle of all that, I had an assistant principal come in with a teacher to do kind of like a walkthrough and they were looking for certain things and I'm trying to get these activities going with the students that as I was trying to give the cups back to the students, one of the kids accidentally kind of did like this because I guess he was talking to his teammate about something and needed to use his hand movements. I use hand movements all the time as well. He did like this and knocked the vinegar cup a little bit and drop vinegar on the table and on himself. So I had to try to dry that up while the AP was in the room. And I just know it was not a good walkthrough. And I just wanna be honest. And as much as you see me doing all these amazing lessons and it seems like I have everything together, I don't have everything together all the time. I really don't. And I'm a firm believer of what Megan Forbes from Too Cool for Middle School recently mentioned in one of her Instagram posts. If you think I have it all together, somewhere in my life, something's falling off the wagon. And yeah, I have a couple things falling off the wagon. And yeah, I feel defeated right now and kind of sad because I gave the students multiple opportunities to correct their behavior so that I can continue doing these activities with them. And they just did not do it. And I had to take away the rest of the activities, the rest of the science activities for the week, which is sad because I have all the materials and I have students in here that really want to participate. But how do I differentiate between who gets to participate and who doesn't get to participate? So I'm just suspending it for now and I don't know if I'm going to do anything again with this later on this week, but I'm feeling pretty defeated right now and it's kind of like puts me in a sad mood, but I'm going to try to pick up the pieces and keep going. So it's my lunch time. I'm gonna sit down and eat my food. And then I have some prep time and I'm gonna use that to continue grading and get things done. All right, so I'll see you later on in the day. All right, so it's the end of the day and I do have to say I feel better, but I know that I'm not gonna feel 100% until I at least go and talk to my principal about how I felt about today's walkthrough. And I'm pretty sure she's going to make me feel a little bit better about it. But after the kids came back from PE, we dove right into unit one, week five. I know we're still behind, but it's okay because I have a plan. I'm going to go through the entire week with my students 
these next couple days and then next week we'll be right on where we're supposed to be which is unit one week four i know the district had us go to five before we did four so now we're doing a little backtracking but that's what the pacing guide says so i'm just trying to follow as best as i can so in order to get the students into the standard that we're going over with that particular unit which is main idea and details but it's also summarizing i had them read the shared read twice so i had them take turns reading it and then i read it aloud we talked about it about what it was and then i had them create a tree map that looks like this so on the tree map we put the title of the passage and then we separated all the sections because it was an informational text we have the introduction then we have hearts and souls and then we have giving back rocks and then the bottom line i had them create a summary for each section so i kind of helped them out with the first two and then on their own they had to do the last two and they had to use these summaries of each section to then come up with a main summary for the entire selection so in that way they're working with summarizing and paraphrasing and making sure that they understood what the whole entire passage was mostly about and the details that supported that main idea then after that, we were introduced to chapter four, which is dividing by one digit divisors. And we actually spent most of the time, which was not a lot of time because of how long science took us this morning, but we spent a lot of time trying to solve one interesting, unique problem. I'll show you what I mean. So this is the problem right here. We basically had to decipher what each of these letters represented. And these were the digits that were used. So we kind of had to think of the multiples of five because U is five. And then that way we figured out the answer, which is right here. And we wrote what each letter represented. So yeah, that problem was pretty interesting, but it was actually a lot of fun to figure out. All right, so then tomorrow we're just gonna go over 4.2 and 4.3, which is all about investigating and interpreting remainders, which I'm excited to help them understand the different ways that we understand and interpret remainders. It all depends on what the question of the problem is asking us to find. So that's what we're doing. We didn't get to social studies, so I'll make sure I do some social studies probably on Thursday because tomorrow they are actually taking their first two hour nonstop district writing assessment and it will be an opinion assessment so they're going to be taking that tomorrow for two hours so that will give me an idea of where they are with writing and we will definitely use that particular essay for many lessons so that they can reteach and relearn the different things they have to do with their essays so far they have written about three essays on their own so this will be the fourth one but this is the first one that they take non-stop for two hours and then after that we'll do math and that's the only thing that we'll have time for tomorrow since it's wednesday and it's early release the kids leave at 150. all right so that's all i wanted to update you on right now i'm getting ready to go to girls in the run and i'll see you after that Right, everyone so it's way after girls in the run i came back i tried to go see my principal but she was busy in a meeting so i just came right up to my classroom and i started grading away so i have been grading since around four something and it's about to be eight o'clock so i think i've done a good amount of grading i'm pretty much done with two complete subjects and most of one so that means i have about two and a half more because of that one that i haven't finished and I still have until Thursday night and it's only Tuesday night. So I think I'm on a roll. I am making great progress. I am putting in the grades. I'm looking over all the things I need to do. So I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to go get myself some dinner. I'm going to get home. I'm going to shower and relax and do some self-care because I really need it after the day that I've had. But I'm still going to keep a positive attitude. And there might be a way that I might bring some of these experiments back on Thursday. Definitely not tomorrow because the students do need to take a two-hour writing exam. And I want them to make sure they focus on that. And then the rest of the time we'll be doing math. So, but definitely I'll think about bringing it back on Thursday and then I'll just have some things in place in case some students start to not behave as they are expected. And then I'll have an alternative assignment for them to do after they receive a warning. So that's what I'm planning on doing and I hope that that will work. So I'm still thinking about it, not sure if I will do it on Thursday or if I should just do the experiments next week starting Monday. So. I may be inclining towards Monday just so that I can make sure they understand the consequences of what they did and hopefully it will be a lot better next week. So maybe I'm just going to do that. 
All right, so I'm gonna end this vlog here. I'll make it into a two-day vlog, and tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday will be a separate vlog. On Friday, I'm going to a Minecraft EDU professional development, so I'll make that into a separate vlog, so I'll have a total of probably three vlogs this week. So I hope that those can be out and rolling along and coming out and you enjoy them. So thank you for coming along with me. If you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.